Hello fellow problem solvers. So today we're going to be doing a problem from the 2015 IMO shortlist, problem number A2. I suggest you try this problem out for a minimum of 30 minutes, ideally an hour and a half, two hours, but not more than three hours. If on the other hand, you'd like to go along with us, take five minutes, read the problem and get your first ideas out on paper, play around with the problem. So now let's begin. So we have a function from the integers to the integers, which satisfies this equation right here. So there's not much to say here, but let's pause for a minute. Now let's look at the function before plugging anything in. What you have is a constant outside of the f's and none of the variables are outside of the f's. Now this at first glance seems like it will be difficult to prove an injection, but we don't know just now. Also what I noticed is that here we have x and y under the same f sort of together influencing each other and here they are free from each other. Now a common problem solving strategy in functional equations is to try to cancel stuff out on sides of the functional equations or make them constant. So here one way of doing that would be zeroing this thing out right here and we do that generally by plugging in x equals f of y and that implies that f of 0 is equal to f of f of f of y minus f of y minus 1. Now this is cute but at the beginning doesn't give us anything so now let's try to cancel these two out which we can by plugging in y equals f of x. We'll get these two cancelled out and what we have is f of x minus f of f of x is equal to negative 1. Now this is fantastic because now we know for sure that negative 1 is one of the values that f takes. So there is a value z such that f of z is equal to negative 1. And now if we plug that z back into the original as y, because that will cancel this out, what we get is that f of x minus f of z, which is minus minus 1, f of x plus 1 is equal to f of f of x. Now this thing is great because it just simplifies the functional equation we had up here. It's generally better to deal with less involutions of f's when you can in your functional equations. It's a rule of thumb, not always true, but here we do it. So we have that the function is f of x minus f of y is equal to f of x plus 1 minus f of y plus 1 in brackets. Now from here there are many ways to continue and the way you choose really depends on your style. I would invite you now to pause for 10 to 20 minutes and see how far you can take this problem. And after the pause I will describe one approach which I did not take and which we will not take here. And then I will solve it in a totally different way. Now is your chance to pause. I really, really invite you to pause here. So here's the idea. So the first semi-standard trick in functional equations is to evaluate some f in two different ways. And then you combine those two different ways you evaluated f to get to a solution. So we will not do that here, but I'll give you a hint as to what f you should evaluate. You want to evaluate f of f of f of x in two different ways. This isn't too much of a hint because usually you evaluate something similar to this, either f four times or three times, like a couple of f involutions. This I shall leave you for your own pleasure and time. And now we are going to do this in the way I try to do it in my theme selection test. So we have this and we know that the solution to the functional equation is f of x equals x plus 1. You can check that this is actually a solution. And if you haven't before, then this thing right here is a big, big hint for that. Now for me, sort of knowing and having a gut feeling that this is the only solution, I try to prove an injection here. So let's see what happens if f of a is equal to f of b for some a greater than b. Well, by this thing right here, let's call this 2 and let's call this 1, we get that f of a plus 1 is equal to f of b plus 1 in that case. And so also what we get is inductively that f of a plus n is equal to f of b plus n where n is any natural number. Now the real motivation for trying to prove an injection 
is because I know by plugging in y equals f of x at the beginning, we got that f of x minus f of f of x, which is f of x plus one is equal to minus one. So if the function is injective, then we know there, this is always equal to a constant, which makes f linear, which solves our problem quite easily. So now we have if f of a is equal to f of b, i.e. if f is not an injection, i.e. if there's multiple values whose f equals negative one, then we have this thing, if f of a is f of b, then f of a plus n is f of b plus n for all natural numbers n. Now plugging in n equals a minus b, here what we have is f of a plus a minus b is equal to f of b plus a minus b, which is equal to, the b's cancel out, f of a, which is equal to f of b. In other words, starting from some value, a and b, we would get that this function is periodic. Now take five to 10 minutes and see if you can push this forward. Pause now. So what this gives us is that starting from some b, if the function is not injective, that we have that if f of b is f of a, then b, f of b, is the same as f of a, is the same as f of b plus k times a minus b. a minus b is the period. But also f of b plus 1 is equal to f of a plus 1 is equal to f of b plus k times a minus b and everything n plus one. So what you see here is for every n greater than b, we have f of n is equal to f of b, f of b plus r, where r is what n is congruent to modulo a minus b. So now, remember that we got this f of n is equal to f of n plus b plus d remainder n has when divided by a minus b. We got that just by applying the f of x plus 1 is equal to f of f of x. We got that from here. And we did not at all use the fact that this is our functional equation. So now, how do we use that fact? Well, in this set, there is a maximum number. So let f of t be equal to the maximum of f of b all the way till f of a minus 1. And what we get here by plugging in, by making this and f of y equals t, which we can because we can just plug in y equals t and we can plug in x equals to f of t plus t. And if necessary, we can also add times k times a minus b. And what we get is that the left hand side, when we move this around, will be equal to 2 f of t plus one, and that's going to be equal to the right hand side, which is going to be equal to f of x plus one, which is f of f of t plus t plus k times a minus b plus one. Now call this maximum value s, we have two s plus one is equal to f of x plus one. Now because this is the maximum value, we have that this is less than or equal to s. And from here, we have that s is greater than or equal to negative one. Actually, no, we have it the other way around. We have it that s is going to be less than or equal to negative one. And now I invite you to take five minutes and see what else you can do. Well, you can also make this 2f of t plus 1, f of something something. You can also make it the minimum among these and say that q is equal to f of p is equal to the minimum among f of b, f of b plus 1, all the way till f of a minus 1, say q is the minimum. Then plugging them nicely again, y is equal to q, x is equal to f of q plus q plus k times a minus b, just to make it in the range, just to make it bigger than this uh, b, what we have is that we'll get, actually we make y equal to p, and this is f of p plus p plus k times a minus b, what we get is 2q plus 1 is equal to f of x plus 1. And because we can jack up the k such that x is greater than b, we have that f of x plus one is one of these values, but because q is the minimum, we have this is greater than or equal to q. And now the minimum value that this set contains is going to be q greater than or equal to negative one. 
Now the minimum value is greater than or equal to negative one, and the maximum is less than or equal to negative one, which means that there's only really one value here, which is negative one. And now, this implies that f of t is equal to negative 1 for all t greater than some constant. Now, if we look back to our functional equation, so we can basically set up two of these values to be as big as we want and let one value be as small as we want. The way we do that is we fix y to be some integer, doesn't matter which one, and then we pick x, which is a lot, lot bigger than f of y, plus this constant t, call this constant n, and then also that x is a lot bigger than this constant n plus say 20. So what that means is that f of x minus f of y is going to, because this is going to be greater than this constant, this is going to be negative one, and x plus one is also going to be negative one. So what we'll have is that f of y plus one minus negative one is equal to negative one, i.e. f of y is equal to negative one. So this is a solution is if f is not injective. Now if f is injective, what we have is, we know that f of x minus f of x plus one, and all of that f is minus one. So all of this, because f is injective, must be a constant. So f of x plus one, is equal to x minus some constant c. In other words, f of x is equal to x plus some constant d. Plugging that back into the original functional equation, we get the left-hand side equaling to x minus y and the right-hand side equaling to x plus d minus y minus one. And equalizing these two together, what we have is that d needs to be equal to one which gives us our two solutions, namely f of x is equal to negative one for all x, which are integers, and f of x is equal to x plus one for all x, which are integers. Now we write this all up. We say let p of x, y imply that this functional equation is true. Then we say this, and we call this two. So this implies there exists an integer z such that f of z is equal to negative one. Now we plug in y to be equaling z, and we get that f of x plus one is equal to f of f of x. We name this free. Now we say there's two possibilities, either f is injective or f is not injective. So if, so if f is injective, then from f of x minus the f of x plus one, all f is equal to negative one from two, we get that x minus f of x plus one is equal to some constant c. This implies that f is linear, f of x is equal to x plus some constant d. Plugging this into the original, we get the left-hand side equaling to x minus y and the right-hand side equaling to x minus y plus d minus one, which implies that d is equal to one. And now we move to our second case. Now that we have one solution, i.e. f of x is equal to x plus one, which we checked works. We moved on to the second case. If f is not injective, we get there exist a and b such that f of a is equal to f of b, where without loss of generality, a is greater than b. And now from free, we get that f of a plus n is equal to f of b plus n for all natural numbers n. Now this makes the function periodic starting from some q. And this q is actually equal to b, which means that for all q that are greater than b, we have that f of q is going to be equaling to b plus r, where q is congruent to r modulo a minus b. Now from here, what we do is we take the maximum and the minimum from this set, and then what we do, we get that by plugging in this, we get that f of t on both sides and f of f of x, which we know is, by the way we chose it, we know that f of f of x is going to be f of x plus one. And we know that this x plus one is going to be greater than a and b because we can choose k such that it is. And now what we have is that this is also in this set and f of t, we have is s, push these around, we have 2s plus 1 is equal to f of x plus 1, 
And because x is in this set and s is the highest value it attains, that means this whole thing is less than or equal to s. This implies that s is going to be greater than or equal to negative 1. We do the similar thing for q. We plug in the q's and we get that 2p plus 1 is equal to f of x plus 1, where x plus 1 again is going to be one of these values because we can jack up k as much as we like. So what we have is because the smallest value this can attain is p, so this is greater than or equal to p, which implies that the smallest value is greater than or equal to negative 1. This thing up here actually implies the opposite, s is less than or equal to negative 1. So from here, because s is greater than or equal to p, by definition this being the biggest and this being the smallest value, and both of them being squished between negative ones, that implies that s is equal to p, which means that f of t is 1 for all t greater than some constant we'll call q. And now, plugging in x equal to q plus f of y plus some huge constant, we get that the left-hand side of the functional equation becomes f of x minus f of y, and because this is greater than q by this very thing, we get that this thing right here equals negative 1, and on the right-hand side what we get is x plus 1 minus f of y plus 1, and because x is a lot lot bigger than q, we have that this is negative 1, which implies when we push everything on decides that f of y is negative 1. Given we took an arbitrary y, this implies that f of x is equal to negative 1 for all integers x. Now we plug it into the original to check it works. So this is the original and if every f of anything is negative 1, we have negative 1 is equal to negative 1 minus negative 1 plus 1 which means that negative 1 is negative 1, which is true, i.e. the functional equation is solved. We have two solutions. f of x is x plus 1 for, for all integers x, or f of x is negative 1 for all x which are integers. And as always, thanks for problem solving.